All right, part two. So, body image. A lot of the things that go into this when you're worried about being too fat or too skinny is what meaning are you applying to being too fat or too skinny? Statistically speaking, most men would rather have a woman that's 10 pounds overweight than a woman that's 10 pounds underweight. It's true. Guys like, you know, a little curve, you know. <laughs> well, I won't say anything else. But, you know, you don't necessarily want a woman that when you put your arms around her, all you feel is ribs. I mean, some guys are into that, I'm sure. But most guys, actually, and this is, you know, it's been measured, aren't. But it's more than that. Like, you know, I live in Los Angeles, of course, where almost everybody walking down the street is this big around. And something that, that I feel bad for is that, Women in this world, especially in this country, are really bombarded with images of, of a female ideal that they can't live up to, that it's not actually possible. Like, let me give you an idea. Playboy. For an average Playboy spread of 8 to 10 pictures, how many pictures do you think they take to choose those 8 to 10 pictures from for that spread? How many pictures do you think? A little more. A little more. Between 50 and 70,000 pictures they take before they pick 8 to 10. And then they airbrush, Photoshop, and do everything else. So think about this. Between silicone and weaves and 70,000 pictures and then perfection, professional you know, digital photo correction, when you say things like you look at those pictures and those women don't exist, those women don't exist. It's true. They don't. They've been constructed through through a combination of, of you know surgeries and some of it is you know working out and taking care of yourself and then digital image correction and so you take these pictures and they're put in front of you as this is what a woman is this is what an ideal woman is but she doesn't exist now don't get me wrong they do this to men they do this to men also but men are different in the sense that. Your average man, when he looks at a Calvin Klein ad and he sees some dude with 4% body fat and, you know, is all carved up, your average guy just looks at him and thinks he's gay, honestly. Sorry for my gay brothers out there, but it's true. Guys, for the most part, again, for the most part, don't take images of male beauty and make it mean something about us. We just don't. I mean, we're like, I don't know, uh, so... Right? That's why the whole metrosexual thing didn't really catch on. I mean, it's, we're just kind of immune to it, for the most part. There's some hyper-fashion-conscious guys out there. There's hyper-fashion-conscious straight guys out there. I don't mean to imply that every guy that puts a lot of effort in how he looks is gay. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying, for the most part, you pick ten guys, and you show them Calvin Klein or Hilfiger models, nine of them could not care less. That's all I have to say. Now, But we still buy the clothes, we buy the cologne, we still want the image. I'm just saying that when you see, when we see those images of men, it does not affect us like on a personal level, like it does with a lot of ladies. And so it manifests in an unfortunate series of behaviors, even though there absolutely are guys that have eating disorders. Okay, I'm going to stop giving disclaimers. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking in generalities. Everything is different for individuals. We're talking in general, okay? So how do you break this? First of all, believe it or not, I'd say go on the internet. <laughs> go on the internet and just look. Now, this might seem like strange advice, but indulge me here for a little bit. There is every single type of porn in the world, okay? So no matter how big, too heavy, or too skinny you think you are, somebody's into that. And there's a lot of people that are into that, honestly. There are probably whole websites, whole video series, magazines, and communities dedicated to the image of beauty that you are, okay? Why do I say do this? It, and I'm not saying that you necessarily should go out and start joining any of these clubs. The point I'm getting at is it will help you establish a foundation that there are people that find you attractive just like you are right now, okay? So, you have to start finding yourself as attractive as you are right now, okay? When you look in the mirror, you can still see things that you want to change about yourself, 
and work towards it. Yeah, work out. I work out. You should work out. Everybody should exercise. Even if it's you just go walking after dinner or, you know, find out something you could do at home or join a gym or something like that. And you, but you should do it because of your health. You should do it because of your health and so that you can feel good about yourself, not to live up to someone else's expectations. Does that make sense? But something that I want to say clearly, since I don't know if, if, I, if I said it as directly as I would like, these things about your self-image, like like the, the abuse survivor here, or you know the other person's asking about emotional eating, realize a lot of these behavioral patterns, if this happened when you were, say, 10 years old, okay, and somebody violates their trust and they put your, their hands on you, God forbid, the decisions that you've made about yourself and your self-image were made by a 10-year-old. And so you're still living into the decisions that a 10-year-old child made, or a 5-year-old, a 12-year-old, 15, or whatever it was, okay? This is true of anybody with any trauma that you cannot let go of, okay? That you're still living into the pattern of a child. Is there anything else that you would let this child make the decisions for you? Would you let them drive you to work? Would you let them balance your checkbook, you know? No, you wouldn't do any of that. And yet you're still living according to the decisions that they made, okay? So... If you are an abuse survivor, believe it or not, the very first thing I have to say is forgive the person that did it to you. Forgive them. Forgive them. Remember, we've covered this lots of times, but we're going to, we're going to talk about it at least one more time, and we're probably going to talk about it in the future. Forgiving someone does not mean you're saying what they did is okay. It's not. It's not okay. You're not saying it's okay. It wasn't okay. What forgiveness is, is you're letting go of the negative energy that you have attached to it. You're letting go to the hostility and anger in your heart. It's just like Buddha said, holding on to anger with the intention of hurting someone else is like picking up a hot coal with the intention of throwing it. You are the one who gets burned. Okay? Chances are, this person is somewhere right now sleeping peacefully. Chances are, this person's gone on with their life. And whatever hostility that you're holding on to is not hurting them. It's hurting you. So let go of it for you. And it's okay if you cry and get angry and do whatever process you have to go through to get there. But get there. Get to forgiveness and release it. Because I think what you'll find is when you release whatever trauma that made you form this decision initially about yourself, about your body, and about how to solve it, when you release this initial trauma, then I think you're going to find the fact to get over the emotional eating will come much, much easier. Does that make sense? That if you're still trying to fill a void in your heart, if you're trying to provide yourself with love through food, it's never going to happen, okay? You have to provide that love for you. You have to love you first. Like always, look in the mirror. Every time you look in the mirror, say, you're great and I love you. You're great and I love you. You can say it out loud or silently. The first couple times you say it, it's going to start to feel a little weird. But as you start to free yourself from anger, bitterness, and hostility towards the past, be it towards an individual or just whatever experience has got you to this point, as you free yourself of the, of the negativity and start to add in positivity, a lot of these things are going to start to fall away on their own. Okay? Now, if you absolutely still have to emotionally eat, then... Try and find something that you can eat that won't necessarily hurt you. Try and find a healthy snack. If you got to have cookies, eat sugar-free cookies, eat gluten cookies, eat diabetic cookies, eat vegan cookies. You follow me? There's a way to still engage in the behavior and not have it be detrimental. Okay? I mean, I think everybody likes ice cream when they're sad. Everybody likes to drink coffee when it's a cold day outside, you know? Everybody wants to, you know, have a little something that reminds them of when they're a little kid for security from time to time. That's fine. That's fine. The problem is, like I said with this person that says they're having the digestive problems now, it's only a problem when it starts causing you negative repercussions, okay? Anything in your life, this is true. You, a lot of times people ask me, is this right? Is this right? Is this wrong? Should I do this? Should I do that? Here's the benchmark. If it's costing you, if it's costing you negative repercussions in your life, then it's a problem, okay? You're like, well, do I drink too much? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Some people can hold their liquor. It's just the way of the world. But if you're oversleeping, missing work, drunk driving, spending too much money, then yeah, it's causing you a problem and you need to get help, okay? I'm almost out of time, but you're great, and I love you. And whoever asks me these questions, contact me. I'd like to talk to you directly. And if you don't talk to me, talk to someone. Talk to a professional. Get help. But you're fantastic. I love you. 
Okay, bye-bye.